Well, one of the benefits, Ali, of Manchester City and Real Madrid not meeting in the final of the Champions League is that the neutrals get to see two games between the sides instead of one. And if there was anyone that didn't enjoy the first leg, then they didn't enjoy football. I want to take it forward a little bit, Ali, to the second leg. And knowing that Manchester City are not one of those teams that play one way at home and one way away from home, how do Real Madrid approach this second leg with a one-goal deficit, knowing that City are just going to be playing their normal attacking game? Well, the first thing that Carlo Ancelotti and Real Madrid do is welcome Casemiro with open arms and say, <laughs> all right, buddy, we need you. We missed you quite a bit in the midfield and your presence in terms of having space uh, was something that not only did we miss, but we are desperate to have back. Uh, it's not only what Casemiro does defensively, it's also what he frees Tony Cruz and Luka Madrid to do in the midfield as well. Because in having Casemiro in that position, then you allow Tony Cruz to be more of the, of the player who's going to connect the team, who's going to get the team transitioning forward from the back line to the front instead of having to concern himself with defending. It's not what he does naturally. He can do the job, but it's not quite what Casemiro uh, does. And, and, and to be honest with you, I think it, it, is, it limits Real Madrid defensively, but it also limited Real in having that coming out of the back. It was a very tentative defense from Real Madrid, unsure of themselves. And I think some of that had to do with the fact that people were doing different roles in the midfield that they're not usually doing. And it felt like they, they were just out of place looking for somebody else to resolve the issue. And well, that person wasn't there. It's a different scenario for Real Madrid, isn't it? From the last round when they came back home with a lead. They come back with a deficit this time. Is there anything they can learn from the Chelsea tie that could help them in this Well, uh, I think you just mentioned it there in the lead-up. But it's the fact that Real Madrid against Chelsea in the second leg seem to be protecting rather than playing the game. Now they're yeah. not protecting. Uh, I expect a better version of Real Madrid in terms of their possession and their willingness to confront uh, uh, Manchester City higher up the field. Uh, I think that's going to force Manchester City to defend in areas that they don't want to defend. If you allow Manchester City to just the free to knock and combine and have always, that, and it's not just one option. It seemed like in the first leg for any Manchester City player, well, they're going to do to pieces, which is mm -hmm. what, frankly, they probably should have mm -hmm. scored eight goals, not even exaggerated. We're talking about clear, clear yeah. opportunities, 100 pence. So I don't know that this is what Real Madrid wants to do because they don't have the makeup of an Atletico Madrid. They, they are a team that wants to play. They're a team, we're not just going to absorb pressure with Santiago Bernal, we want to play. Well, if that's the case, then if you're not going to get close enough to Manchester City defensively, then force Manchester City to defend by the quality of your possession. And I think that's going to be the responsibility of, of Real Madrid. And that's where we'll see a bigger and a, a major improvement from Real Madrid is that their possession will be better. They will be more in the attack and have forcing City to defend and not so much freedom for Manchester City to just regain possession of the ball and start knocking it around like they did at the first mm. leg. I said right at the start, Ali, that City play the same, either home or away. There are maybe one or two exceptions. And the second leg in Madrid at the Metropolitano against Atleti, I'm not saying they got away with it because they got through and they were the better team over the two legs by, by some distance. Do you expect City to adopt similar tactics to that one, bearing in mind what you've just said about the quality of Real Madrid's possession will lead to Man City fans that we know we can get past? They have to be better. Manchester City have to be better than what they were in the second leg and particularly in the second half of the second leg against Atletico Madrid, where... It was noticeable that Manchester City had taken a step back, were very unsure with their possession. The movement of the ball wasn't clearly as, as crisp and sharp as we are used to. And there was an element of uh, doubt, an element of fear, an element of hanging on. And that is not natural City. It, it is not what they do best. And certainly they did not look comfortable doing it. So if I'm Manchester City... I have to rely on the fact and trust the fact that when we play at our best with the combination and the movement with the ball and without the ball, we can expose vulnerabilities of any team in the world and we expose the vulnerabilities of Real Madrid in the first leg. If we continue to do that, 
then we're going to be okay because then we're going to force Real Madrid into areas in which they're not comfortable. The other thing is that the further you take the ball away from your defending half, the better mm -hmm. off you are if you're Manchester City. Being of all just Manchester City that Real Madrid does defensively, okay, well, what about Real Madrid exposed in Manchester City and what they did defensively or, 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 or the spaces that Real Madrid was able to find? So if you're Real Madrid, you lost the game. Yes, 4-3. Okay, you gave up four goals, right? If you're Ancelotti, you're probably spinning it to your players as, look, we, we could not be any worse than we were through the midfield. We could not be any worse than we were in the back line, and we're still in. And we showed to ourselves that when we get out in transition against Manchester City, they have their own vulnerabilities. They have their own difficulties. There is plenty of hope here for, Man for Manchester City, but there is even more hope, I think, for Real Madrid because it was damage control in the first leg. Mm -hmm. Now, you're Manchester City, you're confident, you feel good, you're going to Madrid, you did a great job in the first leg. It could have been better. And that could have been better part, that's the doubt that Manchester City have to put aside. And that's the amount of confidence that I think Real Madrid going to the second leg thinking, we're going to be better, we're going to force mistake from Manchester City, we can turn this around. Yeah, that's a good point, because finally, Ancelotti's team talk should be simple. Look, this tie should be over. They should already be through. They should have four or five goals, but they're not. We are in this. They still have a fight. So, as far as tactics are concerned, approaching the second leg, does Ancelotti have to accept that his tactics, while going for goals, will mean that they might have to give up one or two chances to Manchester City in the process? Yeah, and I, and I just think you are cautiously aggressive if you're Real mm -hmm. Madrid. You're on the front foot, you're forcing Manchester City to defend, but you're not taking unnecessary chances on, up until the game dictates that you are, you're do that, that you're having to push for that. Play the game as you would any other time, and then as the game progresses, you start taking more chances and more chances and more chances. And if you feel like the momentum of the game is with you and Manchester City hasn't been a threatened attack, then yeah, then push, push Carvajal forward and see if, they, if you can force somebody to defend on that side. And then push on the other side, whether that's Mendy or whoever else plays on that left-hand side. Push him forward and see if they can also force to defend on that side if you're Manchester City, because then you, your numbers are going to have to drop off. If you're having yeah. numbers dropping off, they're not staying up high, that means that Real Madrid can park themselves in the attacking half. If you're able to do that with consistency throughout the course of the game, then I think Real Madrid will be in a good position. The issue is that if they're unable to complete the passes in order to dominate that possession and then Manchester City get a hold of the ball and then they start knocking the ball around, that's the area in which Real Madrid is going to struggle because I don't think defensively they can cover the spaces. This tie should have been over. It's not. More of the same, please, in the second leg. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.